So soon after independence, India inherited what type of economic system? What were the problems soon after independence? So we have been we had been suffering in the hands of colonial government for the first two two centuries. The colonial colonial government was characterized by the exploitation. What they did? They transformed Indian economic system into colonial system, into a colony. What is the characteristics of a colony? What is the characteristics of a colonial government? It is mere supplier of raw material and and it, it, it transformed into market for finished goods in England. So India, otherwise it was a self-sufficient, self-reliant economy and it was one of the major economies. One of the one of the major economy before in before uh, British occupied India. Why these all kings and emperors allowed the Europeans into India? What is the major reason why they allowed? Because of trade. Otherwise, they wouldn't have allowed in allowed them into India because India is self-sufficient. They are they are buying our goods with gold coins and silver coins. Only reason is India was self-sufficient. India was one of the largest exporter before it was turned into colony. That was the only reason they allowed them into Europe. They allowed all Europeans into India. They are bringing here gold coins and several coins. There was no dollar or uh, pounds or ends that time. Only mode of exchange is gold coins. They were increasing demand for Indian products. That is the o that was the only reason they allowed. But once India was completely occupied and completely annexed by the British government, the East India Company, they gradually destructed all the industries in India, all the handicraft, handicraft and manufacturing industries in India, and they converted Indian economic system into a colonial economic system. What was the major character of the colonial economic system? It was the supply of raw material. They took raw material from India to England, and with because of industrial revolution they set up larger factories with this raw material they processed and they produced cheap goods and the cheap goods again imported to india and they were sold at lesser price what they are what some of the commodities produced with hands handicrafts so gradually it led to the destruction of indian industries so it, it, the same system continued till 1947, colonial exploitation continued till 1947 until we got independence. Now what are the problems, what are the problems we inherited from the British government soon after independence? There was large scale poverty, the oh, main reason is it is a colonial system, colonial economic system. There was no industrial development, no industrial development. Of course, there was little industrial development, but majority of them owned by British capitalists. There were certain industrials. Most of them are owned by, they were owned by British capitalists and few were owned by Indian capitalists. Inequalities. High poverty. Poverty was very high. low agriculture productivity see british government used to collect colonial government used to collect high taxation from agriculture lands agriculture system either through jamindari system or raitwari system or mohalwari system any system they used to collect the range of agriculture taxation varies from 30 percent to 50 percentage but they did not invest any amount to develop the agriculture when it comes to irrigation projects or mechanization of the agriculture or, frag, uh, or the consolidation of agriculture land. So the agriculture product was also very low. That is why soon after independence, once a self-sufficient Indian agriculture system was depending on the import for the food product, food grains from other countries. We used to import even wheat and rice from other countries under PL 420 program 
we used to import wheat from america pl420 program we used to uh, 480 program sorry pl480 program we used to uh, import grains from america so these are some of the problems now what type of so nehru was the first prime minister and his cabinet decided they were thinking what type of economic system we should incorporate and what should be the economic planning we should incorporate for what should be the targets and goals for the economic development so you know there are uh, three types of economic systems by this time you might be knowing socialistic system socialistic capitalistic and mixed socialistic system and capitalistic system and mixed so before we go into the economic planning we should have some basics regarding we should know some basics regarding all types of economic systems so one is capitalist capitalist pattern socialist and mixed mixed economic system so in capitalist the development priorities are decided by the market forces the development priorities are decided by the market forces to demand and supply the growth will be achieved by the market itself the growth will be achieved what is growth already we discussed what is growth what is growth what is economic growth what is economic growth market what is economic growth i am not asking about gdp what is economic growth it is quantitative increase in the value of goods and services not qualitative it just quantitative increase in the value of goods and services of course what is value of goods and services is gdp so growth is quantitative increase in the gdp just it bother about only quantity how much quantity increases increased by quantitative increase in the value of goods and services it of course it is prosperity both value of goods and services nothing but increase in the prosperity increase in the wealth of a country if you convert into the monetary value it is if you convert into quantitative increase the quantitative increase in the growth and uh, increase in the monetary value of goods and services now this growth will be achieved by the market forces itself there will not be government intervention government will not int uh, intervene in the growth achievement of the growth or so entire growth is achieved by the market forces itself and the wealth is owned by private parties no wealth owned by the government wealth is owned by and the factors of production is wealth factors of the production land capital entrepreneurship and enterprise all are in the private hands wealth is owned by private parties private stakeholders and they will decide what is to be produced and how much is to be produced the private forces the market forces will decide based on the demand supply balance they will decide what is to be produced and how much to be produced what is to be produced and how much to be is produced by the decided by the market forces itself and who can afford to buy the goods and services they can buy the goods and services government role is very less government will not give subsidies or government will not give any in incentives to the poor people whoever has the affordability to buy goods and services they will buy goods and services they consume the goods and services the growth and development itself it, the, the development for the weaker sections itself decided by the market forces if they have ability they will get some job 
if they have some skill they will get some job with job they will get salary with that salary they can afford goods and services if they don't have any ability and they are from weaker sections there is no role for them. they will not be taken care if you have more skill and more ability they will get more salary it depends on your ability and capability the consumption is also depends on your ability and capability and your affordability to consume it's completely private forces market forces will decide who will buy what is to be produced and how much to be produced and government's role is very minimal very very minimal very minimal it is just a facilitator facilitator government will act as a facilitator neither a control nor a regulator now come to socialist socialist is command economy this is also known as command economy we command who will command the government government is the owner of the property government is the owner of the wealth there is no private property no private power property entire wealth is in the hands of government wealth is in the hands of government and government will decide what is to be produced and how much to be produced growth priorities growth priorities are decided by the government forces itself there is no private wealth there is no private property entire property is in the hands of government and government will decide what is to be produced and how much to be produced growth priorities and with that it will it is development priorities through redistribution or through sharing and who will take care of the consumption expenditure government will take care of consumption expenditure government will redistribute this production the growth increase in the growth or production is redistributed by the government government will redistribute distribute the fruits of growth in socialistics there are strict socialist patterns there are, we have com communist system and socialist system communist system is complete there is some democracy democratic socialist system involved in the socialist economic system whereas communist is a strict form of uh, strict form of socialist economic system it is completely it is like closed economy they they they, will, they won't even allow the foreign players into their economic system they are totalitarian socialistic system they are called as totalitarian or authoritarian socialistic socialist economic system complete banning of the private property we can see now in cuba and north korea cuba and north korea there is and complete totalitarian socialistic system strict control on the private property or the strict control over the property owned by the government whereas ussr china follows communist system but they they were liberalized now i'll i'll come to that little later now come to mixed economy a mixed economy it is the property is owned by the government both government and private stakeholders the role of both are important for the growth the role of government and the role of private is role uh, both are important like it is like keynesian intervention when there is a fall in the growth government intervenes when there is more unemployment government intervenes when there is fall in the inflation when there is a deflation government intervenes so government here plays the role of regulator uh, role of facilitator rather than a regulator and regulator and uh, here government is both regulator and controller here also government neither a regulator nor controller but little facilitation role but here government is a facilitator 
facilitate the policies for the private participation it will come up with certain policies conducive to the private participation in the economic system capitalist conducive policies government what they will give tax incentives subsidies to the private companies tax incentives so mixed pattern is both participation of government and participation of capitalists are involved in this economic system that is mixed economic system so we chose socialistic economic system no sorry we chose mixed economic system soon after independence but how this economic system should be redistributed how we can of course we chose that we did not completely ban private parties capitalist system but majority of the wealth is owned by the government and government sometimes plays the role of facilitator and sometimes also in some of sectors it also plays the role of regulator and controller so after choosing this type of economic system soon after independence now how we can achieve the growth what should be the strategy to achieve the growth so we started uh, uh, we inherited or we chose the planned economy we chose planned economy strategy to achieve growth and then through growth development so we chose after independence we were tilted towards we were tilted towards mixed pattern of economic system mixed economic system and how in the mixed economic system what should be the strategy for achieving the growth so in the mixed economic system we chose planned economy so once we chose this strategy we were not completely opposed to private participation then why government was taking care of most of the production before independence if we are not we were not completely opposed to the private participation why most of the production was taken care by the government and why we recently gradually moving to the privatization we chose mixed pattern of economic system so we did not completely close the doors for close doors for private capitalists or capitalists and why most of the production was taken care by the government itself in the initial days of independence what is the growth we are there to increase the growth forget about the growth levels poverty so poverty means no 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 my question is why private parties were reluctant to participate in the indian economic system indian pattern of economic system even though we did not completely close the doors for the capitalists they were not they did not participate that is why most of the psus were in the hands of government most of the industries were in the hands of government most of the industries steel or any other system aluminium most heavy industries were in the hands of government in the initial days in the initial days of independence now recently declared that growth has been increasing because of after lpg reforms government recently declared government has no business in business understand the phrase government has no business in business with that strategy after 2014 we gradually moving to the privatization in some of the strategic sectors also they declared the sandia government declared government has no business in business and what is the business of the government what is the business of the government governance only what is the guru governance and with that governance what do you want to achieve the government role is to development development of the country removing the inequalities development of the social sector socio social sector development that you increase the efficiency in the social sector increase the efficiency of the government but you gradually move out of the business because government has other responsibilities not to, not for taking care of the, not for doing develop not for doing business and of course it has been working the business 
by the business people is working we can see the change after lpg reforms we could clearly see the change in growth and development after lpg reforms and what was the growth before lpg reforms if you compare these growth rates the business by the business people business by the corporate list is working and government should play a role of facilitator for the corporate people and most of its role should be pertinent to the only development sector social sector development so what is planned economy here government will own the national resources all the resources are owned by the government resources and wealth and it will prioritize the growth target or set the growth target set the growth targets and allocate these resources to achieve this growth targets understand government will own entirely or most of the resources and wealth are owned by the government and government will set or prioritize the growth targets targets for the growth and development and to achieve these targets and what did government do what government do government allocate these resources and wealth and evaluate the performance of the growth targets and again it will come up with new target this is what planned economy government will own the wealth and resources it will set the target of growth targets and development targets and it will allocate the resources and wealth to achieve these targets this is planned economy so we had inherited so we were we were uh, completely do, uh, the, the founding fathers were doing a lot of brainstorming brainstorm sessions they were and what type of planned economy we should choose we should choose so we choose we chose planned economy and as part of this planned economy we chose five year plan strategy on the lines of ussr on the line of ussr we chose five year plan strategy five year plan strategy see this planning and economy and the discussion on planning and development was not new into the indian economy it has been there it era we have a long lasting history of planning and development we had a long last year of history like because we have bombay plan we have moksha gundam visveshwaraya plan we have gandhian plan we did not suddenly decided what uh, decided that uh, plan uh, we should have the mixed economic system and planned economy we should not we did we did not suddenly decided so in this planned economy also there are various types of planned economy induced planning now you understand what is planning planning a planned economy or planned economy the development and the growth priorities are achieved by the planning planning is the major strategy to in the planned economy to reach growth and development growth and development what we do we do planning what we do planning we set the targets goals we set the goals and targets and we allocate the resources to achieve these goals so there are different types of planning one is indicative planning and the other is imperative planning indicative planning and imperative planning so imperative planning again it is imperative planning again it is similar to socialistic pattern of economic system only government will decide growth growth targets growth and development targets no role for private no role for capitalists so 
complete centralized complete centralization only government will decide the targets so this is by force we command you do that we decided we should achieve that and the role for private parties zero now come to indicative planning now the views of the private parties will be taken into account there will be lot of deliberations and consultations and what should be produced in the country and what what is to be the target of target for growth with capitalists now the capitalist also involved in deciding the growth pattern so after eighth plan we decided to move to indicative planning till eighth plan eighth five year plan till eighth five year plan we, our, our system was most of the economic planning was imperative planning after eighth five year plan we gradually recognized the role of capitalists in the planning so we gradually moved to indicative planning after eighth five year plan understand indicative planning the growth targets are decided both by the government and capitalists or the private sector so government allocate some of the targets growth targets for the private sector also here government will uh, play more of facilitator role when it comes to certain sector government will merely a facilitator indicative planning and whose responsibility to achieve the targets mostly private sector it is given to gradually given to private sector so both government and private sector will have the combined responsibility to achieve the growth and development targets in indicative planning whereas imperative planning government controls complete allocation of resource or deciding the growth targets so ussr and china there was imperative planning before nine before modern era before globalization took a conc uh, conc concrete shape imperative planning was there ussr they were completely following this planning ussr china so india after eighth plan we followed eighth plan indicative indicative plan was clearly indicative plan was clearly discussed clearly implemented imperative planning and indicative planning if you see the some of the history of this economic development and planning so gandhi ji mentioned in gandhi ji was uh, you know um, he used to run two newspapers what are the news newspapers run by the gandhi ji in most of you finished modern india no sir so gandhi used to run this swaraj hind swaraj and harizan in hind swaraj he mentioned gandhian planning what is gandhian planning he is completely against industrialization he was completely against industrialization and what he was he was favoring cottage industries village development cottage industries agriculture development he was completely against capitalists so gandhi is 1909 in this swaraj book his way of economic development what type of economic development and planning he discuss no private industrialists so he is completely on village self sufficiency agriculture production most of the agriculture production cottage industries 
and love for nature we should not disturb environment god this is trustee ship concept this is called trustee ship concept we are just either capitalists or the private parties are the trusts of the nature gandhi's concept of economic production is trustee ship so in ethics you have environmental ethics also in ethics paper gs4 gandhi and ethics also relevant when it comes to environmental problems we face today environmental ethics environmental ethics gandhi is ethics is relevant he talked about trustee ship the industrialists are capitalists you know the quote gandhi is quote what is the quote gandhi is uh, pertains to environment nature gives everyone's need but not for everyone's greed understand nature gives everyone's need but not for greed so we should use the natural resources based on our needs so he is saying that we should control our wants we should control our materialistic wants and use the natural resources which are really required we should not exploit the natural resources beyond our requirement and if you use the natural resources beyond our requirement it is amounting to greed everyone's greed when the greed increases what will happen the today's environmental problems we are facing today's environmental problems because of greed of everyone greed of the private industrialists greed of the capitalists so gandhi is that's why gandhi is completely against this industrialization and he talked about the nature economic development and growth should be achieved through cottage industries and village industries small scale industries but that will not work that is not practical but what gandhi is uh, system uh, development is relevant today is trustee ship and environmental care for environmental care for nature love for nature so we using before we consuming the natural resources we should think about the sustainable sustainability of this resources and everybody recognize now the sustainable development we have sdg targets 2030 what is sdg targets what is the sustainable development what do you mean by sustainable development sustainable development completely based on this gandhi ji's concept of economic development and uh, grow economic growth and development and planning what is the sustainable development Uh, we should also think about the next generation that is what sustainable development right that means but we should consume what is need for us and we should keep some resources for future generations we should renounce greedy greediness should be renounced 1934 again the economic development was discussed by moksha gundam visveswaraya you know he is one of the famous engineers m visveswaraya you know the m visveswaraya is a famous civil engineer you know achievement of this he, he built lot of irrigation projects right the stdd ghat road you see the stdd ghat road was also built by him this famous civil engineer and he planned hyderabad sanitation system when hyderabad was flooded by the 1908 floods he only planned the sanitation network to avoid any future floods and he also developed badravati project badravati steel plant all projects were developed by m v sveswaraya so he talked about economic development based on industrialization and employment economic development based on industrialization and development industrialization and employment employment generation and giving more trust to agriculture giving more trust to agriculture and after 1938 
1938 Indian Congress session whether it is Tiripur session or uh, uh, in session it was presided by the Subhash Chandra Bose he appointed National Economic Planning Committee under the chairmanship of Jawaharlal Nehru Economic Planning Committee 1938 Economic Planning Committee was headed by and the uh, where was this planning committee appointed uh, 1938 INC session and this session was presided over by the Subhash Chandra Bose and he appointed National Economic Planning Committee so this committee talked about rapid industrialization should be this planning committee designed a plan and submitted to British government National Economic Planning Committee and what this main motto of this committee is to freedom of labor from the exploitation of the capitalists we should give more freedom to the labor more wages to the labor more policies conducive to the Indian industry Indian capitalists rapid industrialization along with more rapid industrialization more role for Indian capitalists more role for Indian identify Indian industrialists and capitalists and of course there was appalling poverty in India this poverty should be removed reduction of poverty was also one of the major goal of major goal of economic planning committee and second other is land reforms what was the land reforms land reforms were also because why this poverty why this agriculture poverty was low because land was that time land was uh, controlled by the jamindaris jamindaris most of the areas most of the land is controlled by the jamindaris and most of the peop people are working on these lands are agriculture labor or the tenant farmers are working on the land of jamindaris and what was the taxation abolition of agriculture taxation was also one of the goal of this national economic planning committee immediate implementation of land reforms what you do land reforms implemented through land sealing there will be land sealing land should be taken by the government and that should be redistributed among the poor people land take from the house and you redistribute among the have-nots because there was glaring inequalities and glaring poverty and glaring low agriculture productivity though agriculture productivity was low the taxation was a high and government did, did not take any steps to increase the agriculture product when it comes to industrialization also most of the industrialists are from Europe and the role of Indian industrialists was very minimal and when it comes to labor problem also labor had been exploited by the industrialists it was a comprehensive economic plan it was a comprehensive economic plan designed by the Jawaharlal Nehru and they submitted to British government did they implement it did British government implement this plan what was the immediate reason why they failed to implement it 1938 second, second world war because of second world war it was not even considered by the British now so after 1938 the second world war was over now it was a matter of time for Indian independence the conditions are were so favorable for Indian independence it's just a matter of time maybe one year or two a year or two at this point of time some of the industries came forward and decided what type of economic planning should we have after we got independence immediately after we we get independence from the British they some of the industrialists like Purushottam Das, Thakur Das this was the uh, famous industrialist during 1946 Bombay, Bombay industrialists Purushottam Das Thakur Das other industrialists are GRD Tata and GR Birla 
these are some of the famous Indian industrialists. They met in 1944 and they came up with a plan for India called Bombay Plan. So this Bombay Plan was industrial industrialization, rapid industrialization in 15 years. This plan is for 15 years. So this plan balances both so both rapid industrialization but also gives scope to agriculture development so this this plan is about in 15 years we should double the agriculture production and we should increase the industrial production by five fold five fold increase in the industrial development in 15 years and two fold increase in the agriculture production in the next 15 years so government should consider they also the uh, favored mixed economic system bombay plan also even though they are capitalists they favored mixed economic system in this system what they recommended they recommended for major role for or uh, significant role of government in the economic development they also recommended for conducive policies from the government for the growth of capitalists for the growth of industrialists there should be conducive policies or favorable policies for private capitalists so that along with that they should also manage development of agriculture they also manage agriculture development so after this is this is some of the history of economic development and planning before independence and after independence the founding father chose to mix the economic system and in this mixed economic system they we chose planning development through planning so the for for uh, implementing the planning planning commission was appointed planning commission was appointed in 1952 then planning commission was neither a constitutional body nor a statutory body doesn't have legal powers or constitutional powers it was it was a body set up through executive decision executive decision of the cabinet so till 2014 till 2014 december planning commission was the was the body which has been taking the role of implementing five year plans so we chose plan account planned economy we chose planning system to achieve growth and development in the country and what is the how in the planning system we we, we used to have five year plans five year five year plans and to implement these five year plans what is this there is a body called planning commission planning commission was set up in 1952 observe carefully but the first five year plan started from 1951 to 56 1951 to 56 so remember planning commission was neither a constitutional neither constitutional nor a statutory body what do you mean by statutory body If the body is set up under any legal act, legal backup, any parliament or state act, it is a statutory body. If the body or organization is set up through constitutional provisions, it is a constitutional body. Election commission is a constitutional body because it derives powers from Article 324 of Constitution of India. Finance commission is a constitutional body because it derives powers from Article 280 of Constitution of India right union public service commission is a constitutional body to conduct exams for civil servants it derives powers from article 311 to 315 of the constitution of india similarly appps here state public service commission is also a constitutional body but planning commission neither a constitutional nor a statutory body but it used to have enormous powers it used to dominate finance commission but the role of planning commission has been gradually reduced and now it is completely abolished by 2015 it is it was it was replaced by niti ayog 
I will be discussing that but before that we should discuss all the uh, how many 5 year plans implemented so far 12 5 year plans implemented till 2017 was the last year of the 5 year plan so 5 year plans they are asking uh, the uh, prelims questions they are asking the statements what is the goal of each 5 year plan if you go through that they are asking they are asking some type of questions related to 5 year plan we will discuss all the 5 year plans before we discuss about the role of Nithayav. So the first 5 year plan nineteen fifty one to nineteen fifty six. So they cannot achieve uh, they cannot solve all the problems at one five year plan. So each five year plan they decided one target, one goal, development of one sector. Each five year plan. The first five year plan they decided development of agriculture sector because like today that time majority of the people they dependent on agriculture the agriculture productivity was low once a self we were once a self sufficient in food grains but by this years low food grains high poverty and unemployment this malnutrition now what is the average lifetime this year 1951 average lifetime is 38 to 40 years now we increase to 70 years almost malnutrition is one of the reason it was the one of the reasons is malnutrition the pro food grain production was very low we were depending on the imports for food grains forget about the exports now now India has become one of the largest rice exporter which is the largest rice exporter in rice India is the largest rice exporter how could, how could we, do, we have achieved that because of the five year first five year plan laid certain foundation the foundation was laid by the for first five year plan for agriculture development agriculture what we have done this is H. Damor model he recommended, he set the priorities or the uh, uh, designed the strategies to achieve agriculture development. What is this? Most of the health, uh, wealth and national resources should be implement, uh, should be involved for implementing agriculture development through irrigation projects. Irrigation projects, multi-purpose irrigation projects development of multi-purpose irrigation projects you see this Nagarjuna Sagar project was built during the first five year plan of course before five year plan or before independence also there are certain projects but very less the Prakasam barrage was built under British government maybe in 1970s you know, in the projects in Godavari districts the canal network was also designed by the British government this Sir Arthur Cotton one of the famous civil engineers in the East India company he designed most of the South Indian irrigation projects not only Prakasam barrage or Godavari Dhawalesram barrage in the South India also Kaveri river also he built most of the projects but that is what this is this these projects are limited to only few pockets but after independence we spent sufficient resources limited even if we have limited resources we inherited uh, a low performing economic development from the british but even within our limits in the first five year plan we spent sufficient resources on the irrigation development and fragmentation of the you know our development of the agriculture land development of the agriculture land and consolidation of agriculture lands and 
and also land reforms some resources allocated for implementing land reforms what do you mean by land reforms here land reforms has three criteria one is to abolish of zamindari second is land ceiling third is redistribution of the land you got from these zamindaris one is irrigation projects mechanization of the agriculture land reforms land reforms and or consolidation of lands why because land has been fragmented earlier those years we used to have joint family system under joint family system all the land was owned by the each family so there was no division of this land but this land uh, joint family system has been gradually turning into nuclear system nuclear family system a nuclear family system they go from the joint family system they go along with the land also the land also divided by the brothers divided by the brothers or the members of the same family because of this land division the land is not divided scientifically so there was fragmentation of lands when there is large fragmentation of lands we cannot increase the production in this we cannot have the uh, investment in that fragmented small portion of lands when the large tracts of land we can have larger investment we can have fit, uh, we can investment in the reclaiming the land fertility so as part of this irrigation pro along with the irrigation project land consolidation is also one of the targets for first five year plan so first five year plan the agriculture development what is the growth target we should achieve 2.1 percent gdp growth this is the target the target is 2.1 percent is and we could achieve how much we achieve short of this short of this target or beyond this target above this target above why we achieved above this target so 2.1 percent was the target growth target means 2.1 percent should gdp increase from 19 average gdp increase average growth target that is average growth target average growth target should be 2.1 percentage improvement and interestingly we achieved 3.6 percentage growth because of larger increase in the agriculture production significant increase in the agriculture production we achieved 3.6 percentage growth the first five year plan agriculture had been prioritized and we spent sufficient resources on development of the agriculture and to some extent we were successful in achieving the development of agriculture sector which was visible through 3.6 percentage of growth rate then comes to the second five year plan see if it is take all five years plans the founding fathers decided this planning only through achieve growth self sufficiency modernization and social justice these were the four targets if you take any five year plan what is the fourth ta first target is growth growth is first target second is self sufficiency why i am talking about self sufficiency self sufficiency because by the time of the designing of five year plans we were dependent on imports we were dependent on imports and we had few forex reserves we had very few forex reserves imports or exports are carried through foreign exchange reserves they won't accept our rupees until we have very close relationship with any country like like iran or japan iran or japan we have currency swap agreement but otherwise most of the countries don't accept rupees they accept forex reserves say the dollars or which is internationally accept or which is internationally more demanded foreign exchange reserve so self sufficiency even we were dependent on imports even for food grains also so we should reverse the self sufficiency sorry uh, imports substitution we should achieve the import substitution and we should achieve self sufficiency 
and third target is we should achieve modernization modernization through development of modernization to increase the industrialization to, through development of modern equipment development of modern equipment how we can achieve modernization through innovation we, we should we promote innovation and research and development we should promote innovation and research and development and education then only we can achieve modernization and fourth target is social justice what is the ultimate aim is to achieve social justice remove the poverty remove unemployment increase agriculture productivity increase women empowerment increase the empowerment of weaker sections these are the targets of five year plan so this is uh, visible in all the five year plans including the first five year plan next five year plan is second five year plan this is for after achieving the development in agriculture sector our next target is to develop industrial sector so second five year plan Nineteen fifty-six to nineteen sixty-one. This is for industrial development. This is for industrial development. This is based on Nehru Mahala Nobis model. This is based on Nehru Mahala Nobis model. industrial sector development so we should promote development of more industries capitalist industries industrial development nehru mohalana bus model m a h a l o mohalana bus model is that it was he was the chief statistician the nehru was favor of industrialization modernization and industrialization development of basic industries are capitalist industries capital industries are basic industries what do you mean by capitalist industries are basic industries these industries will produce goods which will produce further goods capital industries are basic industries are these industries are heavy these produces heavy goods which will further produce goods what do you mean by it will this is about developing heavy industries which will produce machinery and other equipment which can be used for producing other further goods and services basic industries are capital industries and the major target major goal of this is import substitution import substitution for basic or capital goods import substitution for basic or capital goods because all the equipment and machinery we we were depending on imports now why don't we develop these goods for ourselves we should achieve self sufficiency for that public sector enterprises were set up larger public sector enterprises psus bhl ntpc hal all these public sector maharatna companies navratna companies mini ratna companies all these are public sector enterprises these public sector enterprises where the government is the major shareholder all these psus will produce basic and capital goods apart from basic and capital goods there is also small scale industries promotion of small scale industries to produce consumer goods larger industries produce to capital goods why this larger industries to be set up for import substitution apart from this there is also small scale industries for consumer goods you 
see electrical let's take the example NTPC is the PSU for producing power what it produces power what it requires boilers whose boilers boiler is the capital the basic good that should be produced by one of one of the larger industries BHL produces Bharat Heavy Electrical Limited produces boilers and these boiler reactors are basic good and that is to be used by another basic another uh, industry which produces goods and services boiler is the capital or machinery required for power projects and that is produced by the BHL that was that was the main intention of second five year plan giving more thrust to promotion of capital industries or basic industries which will produce machinery and that is used for producing further goods and services and if all the industries produces only basic and capital goods what about the consumer goods you want to have a refrigerator you want to have a TV you want to have a AC these are consumer goods for producing consumer goods there is all there was also pro, uh, promotion of small scale industries there was also promotion of small scale industries the third target target is promotion of employment so he, what what this uh, what is the main aim of strategy is trickle down effect let's take the example how it will lead to the trickle down effect what do you mean by trickle down effect what do you mean by trickle down effect what do you mean by downward filtration theory in 9, 1835 mccallum minutes this is similar to downward filtration theory trickle down effect when you have a larger industry in particular area the area will automatically gets developed how it will get developed let's take the a steel plant power pro steel plant project when you set up a steel project steel power plant it will lead to the local employment and it will uh, we will also set up a township and along with the township there will be ancillary industries developed ancillary industries what do you mean by ancillary industries these are small industries which will produce small raw materials for the larger larger industries ancillarization there will be ancillarization what do you mean by ancillarization ancillarization is promotion of local industries or local small scale industries or promotion of local business promotion of local business promotion of local consumption because of because of setting up of larger industries or larger projects larger PSUs there will be employment there will be employment there will be ancillarization there will be development of townships there will be increase in the demand there will be increase in the salaries there will be increase in the demand again that sets the cycle of virtual cycle of growth that I gave you on the first day of the class virtual cycle of growth always try to link any economic concept it is a fiscal policy or monetary policy or a development policy at the social uh, welfare policy you just link with its cycle you will understand what do you mean ancillarization what will lead to and what how would this ancillarization will lead to the development because it promotion of local industries they'll also supply raw material required for that because they will also when the ancillarization leads to the local employment local employment local growth local uh, growth of local industries this was their strategy what was the strategy trickle down effect trickle down effect is when you develop a larger industry in a particular area this will lead to ancillarization local employment demand of uh, increase in the growth uh, increase in the salaries and wages 
increasing the townships increasing the consumerism increasing the infrastructure facilities around that project you see there is in kalahandi one of the poorest poorest and remotest districts in orissa there were in kalahandi districts there were certain aluminium projects in the remote areas because of this aluminium project there were good roads there were good hospitals there were good hotels why they were set up because the large industry is there employee will consume there employee industries will come there for setting up of large industries the roads were developed infrastructure was developed this is what trickle down effect when you set up industrialization when you have larger industrialization when you when you when you decide your development priority through industrialization it will automatically leads to the development of the people that is what trickle down effect how this trickle down effect will work because of ancillarization employment salary increase wage increase local consumption increase local demand increase and it will set the virtuous economic cycle virtuous economic cycle so did they achieve this target what was the target for industrial development they set the target of 4.5 percent is but they could achieve only 4.23 percent is and they also had the target of increasing the investment from 7 percent to 11 percent is i discussed about the investment role of investment in while i was discussing about the gs uh, gdp investment gross capital formation investment and gross capital formation did i discuss during gdp so in during five, second five year plan the investment rate was only 7 percentage and it, you should also increase this to 11 percentage investment rate investment rate are the percentage of gdp investment as a percentage of gdp or gross capital formation as a percentage of gdp only 7% of gdp was investment invested which was using as which was used as investment only 7% of gdp that should be increased to 11% and what is the total growth target for the period entire period we had 4.5% but we could achieve only 4.23% we were short of we were 0.3 short of the uh, decided target and the trickle down was also failed the trick the second target is development of small scale industries was not to a concrete shape they gave only promotion to large industries the two psus they did not give much importance and thrust to the development of small scale industries when they did not give develop uh, much importance or helping hand to these small scale industries there was no ancillarization there was no ancillarization so the trickle down effect was not working as they intended originally as they intended originally but of course it really laid a foundation for industrial development and the promotion of r&d we set up lot of research and development industries yeah, organizations research and research and development organizations r&d institutions we set up technological institutions iits that set up during these five year plans what is the ultimate goal of iits is to uh, innovation promote innovation and competition innovation and r&d and through innovation and r&d we have to achieve industrial development in the long run along with this promotion we the my major thrust had been given to industries or capital industries or basic goods industries next come to third five year plan the third five year plan 1961 to 1966 it was a crucial period for india third five year plan
see the first five year plan agriculture development second five year plan industrial development through import substitution import substitution third five year plan now it is about balancing both agriculture and industrial development agriculture and industrial development both agriculture and industrial development 1961 to 1966 but these were the very troublesome years for India inflation rate was high we had no forex sufficient forex reserves industrial development is also well short of a target we faced war with China 1962 war with China 1965 war with Pakistan and in the time suddenly Nehru died in 1964 and there was also political instability who should be the next Prime Minister I'm not asking about who is the next Prime Minister there was a crisis who should be the next Prime Minister with all these problems the third five year plan wants to achieve or wants to wanted to strike a balance between both agriculture and uh, industrial development. I think you have class at 7 o'clock, right? We'll see the next.